So, um, are you actually familiar with how much time do people spend on a page before they leave if they're not interested? Your guess? Four seconds, up to four, four seconds, okay. So, uh, I've wasted 10 seconds of your time. If you don't like this, like a front end, you are free to walk away to bounce. So, if not, stick around. Okay, so uh, anyway, um, uh, I'm actually a psychologist, by the way, um, dealing with websites and the internet for the last almost 10 years. So, my role today will be to actually brainwash you into properly using split testing tools and, and how, to, how to do the split testing on the, on the WordPress. Um, how does... Okay. Anyway. Um, what is split testing? So, how many of you actually in the, in the room have used any kind of split testing tools, are dealing any, anyhow with uh, CRO stuff, doing split testing or whatever? Okay, about 20, 30%, something like that, right? Okay, so anyway, for the rest of the room, because I saw that there's a lot of developers around, um, I'll be pretty, uh, pretty um, let's say, marketing-oriented. I won't be so much technical as the previous, as the previous presentations. <laughs> okay, so anyway, um, my role today is to actually uh, uh, try to, uh, to get you closer to split testing or A-B testing or whatever um, and to show you how it's better than to actually completely redesign your website every XYZ years. Anyway, um, as, as it mentions, traffic's, uh, traffic uh, is uh, randomly split be between the variations. Uh, so you have uh, one variation which is a control, which is current current one. Then you have variation A, B, C, or whichever, and you randomly split traffic between the variations. That's the classic, uh, um, classic example of split testing, and that's pretty much the wider final definition. So um, even if it's called A/B testing, you don't have to have only two versions. You have you can have as many. Um, and as additional note, um, you don't have to use actually the split testing. You could be using something called multi-arm bandit. That means that this, uh, the traffic is not split um, uh, equally all the time. It is actually split equally for uh, some specific amount of time, amount of days. And then the multi-arm bandit uh, um, lo uh, algorithm decides which version is more likely to win and in that case, it forces, um, it forces more traffic to that variation. That's really good for fast split tests. But you'll see uh, um, after, uh, after a couple of slides how much time do you need to actually sp uh, spend on split testing uh, and the, the, the test itself. Now, what is multivariate testing? Uh, well, pretty much the same thing, uh, with the only difference that you, uh, instead of uh, oh, by the way, uh, the um, presentation is will is and uh, will be on 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 slides share, so you don't need to take photos, write or whatever. Um, anyway, multivariate testing is pretty much the same thing as the split testing. Um, as uh, the the only difference is that you have a couple of elements on the page, and you don't change the whole page or uh, the, 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 most of, the most of it, you decide to change only one element. So title, image, uh, one color here and there. And the point is that actually you make a couple of those changes, a couple of those blocks of changes. So you have uh, three variations of tri title, three variations of one image, three variations of one button, and you combine them all. So you get A1, B1, A2, B1, etc. So you get a, a combinations, right? Um, and all of them are shown to visitors randomly at the same time. Uh, the difference between the split testing, classic split testing, and the multivariate testing is that for multivariate testing you need a tons of traffic because it would take ages to, to actually test it this way and get statistically relevant results. So, why do that? Because you don't have a hypo, highest paid person in the room, right, which decides and says, okay, uh, we'll do that. We'll change the design like this. Why? Mm, well, because I said so. Or, uh, different variation, we have a um, designer 
which has a tons of experience, and he knows what's the best for the website, right? No. So uh, you split test, and you, you just put his variation, my variation, your variation, whichever. You put it on test and say, OK, this one won. But it's not as simple. Um, test what people really do, actually. Uh, you have probably heard uh, um, uh, um, about the usability testing and about actually putting people uh, next to a computer and saying to them, OK, just do something, right? Um, mo probably many of you which have built the website anytime in their lives have put their grandma or sister or whoever who didn't see the website and said, OK, play with it and then uh, saw what the problem is. So that's the usability testing, let's say, 101. So instead of them saying, oh, I would click here or I would do that, you actually split test that and you don't have guesses on what they would be doing. You actually get measurement on what they would be doing. Uh, then you can get insights um, from those split tests into some, some kind of marketing efforts. So you split test the title, you split test the image, and you put it on in practice, later on in the AdWords or wherever, right? And um, actually, conversion rate optimization can be done without split testing, but it's not valid, because uh, it's mostly like guessing, which then again is not as the first, first point, right? Data be beats opinions. So, Valid conversion rate optimization needs to have um, testing. So, optimize or die. And thanks for uh, the title to Craig Sullivan. Anyway, um, we have two options. One is to actually be like uh, um, classic websites and to say, okay, we have a stepwise redesign, which means every XYZ years, we have a complete redesign of the homepage of any product pages or whatever. And with that, we can say, OK, um, our design changed to better or to worse. But you'll find it out only when you press the button, right? So you can be extra cautious and say, OK, I'll reserve like 10% of the traffic to the new design. And I'll see how it performs before I switch the plug, uh, 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 to, uh, pull, the, pull the plug out for, uh, for the X uh, uh, design. Um, but you might be losing a lot of money. So instead of actually, um, instead of um, missing the gains between launches, you would be doing continuous redesign. Now, you might say, OK, but it costs more. I need to constantly have a designer on it. I need to uh, develop changes. I need to do that, this or that. Yes, it does, it does require more resources. But if you have a mindset of continuously improving your website and continuously testing, actually, uh, it's better in the longer run. You just need to establish a proper process, and the return on investment just won't be a problem in that case. Um, I cannot tell you how to do that. You need to figure it out on, on, on your own. But I, get, I can just say that websites which are continuously testing and improving uh, are performing better. Um, Example, Amazon, hello. So they're constantly testing something. Uh, did you know, uh, by the way, that Google, um, the color, the blue in, in uh, one of the O's, right, Google, um, they did some ridiculous split test, like changed the variation of the blue color in that. I mean, but they're crazy guys because they can, uh, they can afford the billions of people every day uh, that could be testing a millions of variations of blue. So they figure out which one is the best and stuck with that. Um, so before testing, you obviously need to set your measuring right. Okay? So you'd be doing quantitative analysis, which answers um, what is happening on the website and how something is happening on the website. So that would be analytics tools like uh, Google Analytics slash Universal Analytics, Kiss Metrics, Mix Panel, or whatever you like. Um, and the point is that in that in, in in that situation, you need to set your goals. You need to set your set up your events. You need set to set everything up that you would like to to track on the website, and that's important for you. 
Uh, and like I said, uh, you would be also doing behavior tracking. That would mean that you would install a couple of scripts uh, like crazy egg, click tail, inspectlet, uh, which are all the tools which provide you with an information about where people click on the page. So Google tells you, okay, I went from page A to page B, or I spent that much time on page A or page B, and this one tells you people were clicking on an image which didn't have link. And you say, oh, damn, I forgot to put the link in there. And you wouldn't realize that with Google Analytics because it wouldn't show you the click on the element which doesn't have a link in it, right? So behavior tracking and the, the, the tools like heat maps and session recording would show you those kind of problems you, you po uh, possibly have with the user experience on your website. Then you would do qualitative analysis, which actually answers why. You would answer, uh, you would uh, uh, ask people, okay, tell me what the problem is. Uh, did you possibly enter all, your, all of your credit card details and it wouldn't go through? Maybe it's a problem in a, in, a, in a browser, in a version of a browser and somebody couldn't pay even if they wanted and you didn't know that. So you ask them and they say, well, you built a beautiful website, but I don't know where to click. And I've seen that too many times. So somebody invests like a, a couple of thousands of euros in some beautiful design and it's a spaceship, but nobody knows what to do with it. So, and they say, okay, please, some button or some indication on where should I click, right? Or uh, you just do something like polls uh, where you put, you know, those, those small uh, 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 annoying things in the bottom right, which uh, pops up and say, okay, are you satisfied or whatever. Um, you need to define sample size. Now, this is a very important point. Um, I won't bother you with statistics, even if, you, uh, if, if it would be good if you are uh, past uh, Statistics 101, but let's just say that you need, for a proper test, you need to know what's your sample size. You need to know how many people would you include in the testing, otherwise you're just doing something random. You don't have uh, the exact number about how, how relevant the test is. So you need to know, uh, by using the calculators, uh, uh, um, uh, just remember that you need two-sided the test, so not one-sided, right? Um, so you would actually be dividing the sample size based on your traffic volume on that page or the block of pages, and you would define it with the current conversion rate, and it would say to you, you need to split test for the next 44 days, and each of the variations needs to, uh, to include 1,500 visitors, for example, and it needs like uh, 10 conversions per variation. And that's your sample size. And 44 days is how much you would be testing. With slight variations, but I'll go back to that later. Um, so the only way to actually be statistically valid is to do it like this. Seasonality. Now, you can test for 44 days, but imagine in those 44 days, it was a Christmas, but then you have a problem because people are behaving differently during certain um, um, holidays, during certain seasons. For example, you have a shop which sells eyeglasses or sunglasses, for example, and nobody's buying them in September or October, right? So you need to know your business and you need to know What's the seasonality in your business? In that case, you might need to prolong the period, the period which, uh, during which you're testing or to shorten it a little bit and to put in more juice so that it could go faster before Christmas sales or Cyber Monday or whatever. Then you need to, <coughs> you need to align your split testing with business strategy. What that means is that you wouldn't be split testing just the first thing that you think of. And you said like, oh, cool, I saw a yesterday a webinar and they told me that it's a really nice thing to test the button, call to action, maybe test the title, or everybody just test the image. So the lady, watch, uh, the lady is, uh, uh, is turned on this side or on this side, let's split test that, okay? So um, 
if it doesn't align with your uh, business strategy and goals, what you would like to accomplish and what you would like to measure and to improve, just don't randomly split test some, some things. So first determine keep KPIs, that would actually mean key performance indicators, which is actually uh, what is important for you, which are the indicators of your improvement of the website. And please do, I'm not, um, I, wasn't, uh, I wasn't doing a due diligence in this one, I didn't make testing roadmaps, but I realized that it's a very good thing to do. Why? Because when you make a testing roadmap, that means I want to test these 20 things in the next six months. Why? Because if, if you listed all of the things that you need to test, that you want to test, you would be able to prior, prioritize. You would say, actually, okay, this is more important at this point, and I can leave this for, let's say, in three months, something like that. If you didn't do that, you would just be doing it randomly, say, saying, okay, let's do this, for example. Um, then business cycles. So for example, I have worked on a website that sells Swiss watches. So one Swiss watch was like 15, 20,000 euros. Um, their sales cycle was between two and six months. First time people came on the website, until the point they actually bought the watch, six, six months, right? So imagine you, would be spl uh, you were split testing for maybe two months or something like that. You didn't think about the actual length of the business, uh, uh, business cycle and the waves that are in there. Some of you have, have seen probably that there are waves in the people behavior online. So on Monday, everybody is ecstatic. So the traffic goes like this. And on Tuesday, it's about like this. And on Friday, everybody is eager to go home. And on Saturday, Sunday, um, if you're not a business uh, which works during the whole week, you have low amount of traffic. So take that as well into account. So if you're beginning on Monday and ending on Friday, you'll be missing two days on Saturday or Sunday, and you'll be missing valid data. Uh, for that, to, to, uh, to emphasize that, so test minimum one purchase cycle or and or, right, two business cycles. So, technical check. Um, today, um, there were a lot of presentations about the SEO, about the speed, about the technical aspect and the background of the website. So, I'll be just saying that if, for example, you have set your split test. You have planned everything, you have measured your, you have done your homework in statistics, you have done, prepared everything, uh, but you forgot to test it on an iPad. So sometimes uh, people actually from the iPad might be taking like 20 or 30% of your traffic, traffic amount, and they're not seeing your test properly. Imagine what that would do to your results. And you would be changing the whole website according to behavior on the desktop, and you wouldn't know that something got really, really uh, messed up on iPad. Or uh, a bit niche example. Let's just say that recently I had a problem between version 39 and 40 of Google Chrome. And it, be, uh, it happened in the middle of my test. When the test ended, I realized that actually in the version 40, they just did something which messed up my test. And so I had to do it again. Because I don't have valid data, because in the middle of a test, something happened. So do, do your homework, test in the browsers, devices, screen resolutions. Um, check your server resources. So you don't need to have, a, uh, you don't want to have a website which loads in like, 5, 10, 15 seconds, right? Turn off any plugin that you can, and especially uh, uh, think about the, the ones which are unnecessary, of course. So um, I'll, I'll be sending you uh, this on, on the, the Twitter. I'll be posting this. So uh, you have a resource list of all the possible resources that you might need for the analytics, behavior tracking, design analysis, or feedbacks. Some of them I have mentioned previously. Um, you have as well the duration calculator. Then previously mentioned site speed, page, page speed tools, then ping them, right? So all of those are used for site speed measuring. Then browser compatibility that I've just talked about. So browser link, cross-browser testing, browser, etc. So you'd be testing actually one version of the test 
across browsers, uh, variations, devices, etc. Statistical significance uh, uh, resources and the duration calculator. So now, what to test? Okay, so we get back to that thing. What to test? Is it the just first thing that we saw, and or possibly something which we think it's fancy to test right now? Well, just align it with your goals. So. I, won't, I don't want to repeat myself, I, I've already told you that, but I'm just emphasizing the importance of that. Just think about what your goals are, and according to that, just split test that. Uh, and don't take the good case, good case practices, because there are no universal rules in split testing. Let me just say it one more time. There are no universal rules. So, green button doesn't work all the time. Orange button also. So, it's a point of actually, uh, you, have, you have a good case practices. Amazon can tell you, okay, we have split test on our huge visitor base, something for two months, and we realized that green button kicks ass. That's good, but maybe it's not for your website. So, you can take good case, case practices, but take it with a grain of salt. So, you actually need um, to look for patterns and the, the way they're thinking, because you probably don't have budgets like Amazon does, right, for split testing, or Google, uh, and their, their crazy idea of split testing the color, but um, you have the way of thinking, of actually implementing the changes and thinking, um, uh, okay, so button should be probably here, or maybe image should be here. But like I said, take it with a grain of salt. I've seen in many cases that one website um, doesn't have to have the actual image of the product on the left and everything else on the right. I've seen it uh, just mirrored and conversion was just skyrocketing. So, there's no universal rules. Now, how to test on WordPress? Let's just say that you can, uh, you can split test page A versus page B. So in that case, you would be using one of the tools for split testing, like Visual Website Optimizer or Optimizely or whatever. And you would be making two different URLs, and you would be sending traffic randomly to page A or page B. That's the simplest one. Then you have dynamic changes on the website. In that case, you need a developer, probably, if you have a dynamic website, uh, which would make actually jQuery slash JavaScript code which would dynamically change the page. Um, and in that case, you still have one page with dynamic changes of the whole page. That's my, my preference. Then you have a multivariate test, as we mentioned, so you can dynamically change the elements within the page. Then you can split test the whole page template or the whole website template. Um, by the way, have you noticed that there are no images in the presentation? Yawn, okay, yeah. There are no images, there are no jumping dogs, uh, or owls, uh, funny cats, or whatever. Uh, I'm actually split testing this presentation because I've, uh, I've uh, given something similar in Prague, uh, like a uh, month and a half ago, and with all the funny elements, I had a, a room like this. So, um, Okay, you're not like that. Okay, all right, all right, okay, okay. So anyway, um, now the WordPress testing, and this is the resource list for some of the things that I mentioned, like testing providers, like Visual Website Optimizer, Optimizely, etc. Some of them have the uh, WordPress plugins. And uh, let's just say that, for example, uh, my personal preference is content experiments within Universal Analytics. First, um, things, uh, first thing why, because it's free, uh, and because I can do my own jQuery, JavaScript, and changes uh, uh, on the page. And second thing, because it plays much nicer with all the sorts of plugins. So you don't need a special plugin for split testing or external service that would do that for you. So you're doing it on page, with Java, uh, jQuery, with Google Analytics. Nelio is one of the examples where uh, you would be using their plugin for um, doing the, 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 um, the randomization, and some plugins on the, on the right. Then, 
what are the general testing pitfalls and myths? Let's just say, um, let's just say that stopping test at 95% when it's reached is not a good idea. First thing, because you need to honor your sample size and your uh, test length. Uh, I've seen in many cases people saying, okay, so we want it to be 95% valid. We have a 5% error, uh, a 5% ver uh, a possibility of error. So now that we've reached 95%, we're good. So um, I've seen it, happen it uh, happening after two hours. So uh, uh, in beginning of the test, probably, if you have a lot of traffic, one of the variations will jump up and will just make a big difference comparing to the other variations, and you would reach 95%. So no, that's not valid. So you need really to honor what we've talked about so, uh, so that you could have your split, split test uh, valid. Then uh, test results for one experiment, they're valid forever. No, again, because possibly you have been split testing, I don't know, for example, in, in a season which isn't your typical season, or in the meantime, you changed your AdWords call to action, or for example, in the meantime, you did something else on the website, maybe you improved the speed, and with the improved speed, you would be having lower bounce rate, more people would be staying there, and you would be having a different result. So, um, as a rule of thumb, let's just say that once a year, uh, if you did some huge change on the website, retest it, because you might get different results. And one of the, um, um, let's say one of the, uh, the myths and one of the lies, test without conversion rate lift is failure. Mm, no, it's not, because from the failure, you would be learning what didn't work and you wouldn't do it again, right? So it's not a failure because if you track it and, and remember what you did wrong and all of the other uh, methodology that you did, like so you, you properly uh, set up measuring, you did your homework in the statistics, etc. So if you did all of that and you didn't get good results, that's completely okay. Um, lots of, let's just say, CRO gurus, conversion rate optimization gurus, would tell you online and they, uh, that split testing is, let's just say, easy and it's a gameplay. Um, well, let's just say that it's not that hard, but the problem is that not every test wins. Let's just say that about 30 to 40% of tests, if you're experienced, wins. So. I needed to brush up my skills for a couple of years to reach the point where 40% of, uh, of my tests win. So don't be discouraged if your first test just fails. That's completely okay. Then WordPress website testing problems. We have talked about the caching. Well, let's just say that in many times I've been cursing uh, caching developers. Why? Because often testing cannot run and doesn't play nice with caching plugins. Um, especially, for example, if you have, um, you have a couple of versions of, of page. Um, for you developers, um, how many of you actually uh, develop the website online instead of local environment? One. Mm. Nice, okay. Uh, last time I, I, I asked this question, I got the full room of uh, live ones. Um, okay, so anyway, um, imagine that you are actually trying to see if something works and you erase the cache in the Chrome and you're not seeing the new variation. And imagine on top of that you have a caching plugin. Then the, then the fun begins because you cannot see on which of the variation changes that you did, how they're performing and whether the browser is displaying them properly. So either uh, try a different caching plugin or turn off the caching completely. That's one of the, the common pitfalls with the, the WordPress websites. If you don't have to use caching, if you have a light, a light website, in the split testing, just don't use it. Uh, or sometimes just excluding certain scripts. Like for example, 
um, uh, split testing script uh, gets minified by a caching plugin, right? And uh, it just messes up the display of the uh, and the, the 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 way plugin works. So just exclude the script and it will probably work properly. Then probably you might be having too much plugins. Like, uh, how many of you have the websites which have over 50 plugins on the website? I've seen that. Okay. Anyway, um, over 50 plugins. Uh, that would mean actually uh, a page load time of about 15 to 20 seconds. And that's nice because uh, the guy is really sure that his website is going well because he has all of the whistles and bells that he read on online and he thinks that it's just fine. And when I added on top of that my split testing, um, it went un uh, unusable. So 22 seconds. No. So. Just turn off all of the plugins that you don't need. Try to lower page load time as much as you can. Testing plugin is not playing nice with some other plugins. That's something which you will see too often, unfortunately, which is why I would actually recommend the version with jQuery and slash JavaScript on page through Google Analytics because it's the, let's say, it's the cleanest version. You don't need to put plugin for Google Analytics, you would just say, okay, this is the code, these are the changes, do the content experiment through uh, experiments API, and the uh, variation that you need would be pulled and the page properly displayed in many of the cases. So, or just try other testing services. So, these are some um, different resources that I, I, would, I would recommend. So some people to follow on Twitter, some blogs to follow, some possible books to read. Um, that, let's just say that some of these actually influenced, uh, influenced me, uh, like don't make me think, um, uh, my, my way of actually thinking and, uh, and doing the design. And now about me, this is the part where also it doesn't have an image. This is my mistake. So uh, anyway, um, I'm, a, I'm a, a consultant, independent consultant, uh, working in, in the field of analytics and AdWords and CRO for, let's say, a couple of, couple of years, lots of websites. And um, I've been working at ManageWP until recently, and now I'm here talking about these things um, as an independent guy. So that's all from me for today, and you're free to ask questions. Thank you. <laughs> okay, we are, we are taking one or two questions because we are a little late. Any question? None. Okay, then I need to continue. Well, thank you testing. very much. Right. Thank you very much, Igor. Thank you for being here. Okay.